Yo, what's going on? It's your boy G Mace. Um, just wanted to drop a quick tip, real quick, because it's been on me to kind of let people know since I've been doing a lot of um, a lot of engineering lately. Um, just want to get y'all. Well, when I say y'all, I'm speaking mainly to artists, um, anybody that performs with a microphone and a live PA um, or sound system, as you would call it. Um, you would also call it sound reinforcement. This is kind of like um, live stage etiquette 101, I guess you would say. So, basically, to get to the point, first and foremost, as an artist, you should learn how to hold the microphone. That's about all I'm going to say right there because most of you guys should know. And I'll come back to that later. But also as important is the fact that if you're performing with a live um, PA a live sound situation or whatever it is to make sure you understand what I'm saying when you're performing live make sure that you do not cross even if you can get to them do not cross in front of the mains the mains those are the main speakers usually at the front of the stage that's giving your sound to the audience so um, make sure that you stay out from in front of them when you're using a monitored system basically that's the speaker that you use to hear yourself when you're using monitors be conscious of where you are I understand getting in the moment and all this kind of stuff but as a professional you have to be aware of where the monitors are and also where your mic is in reference to the monitor Otherwise, you'll get what they call feedback. Or feedback is basically when the sound system is amplifying itself. It makes a noise. The microphone hears the noise, sends that noise back out of the speaker. That same sound is being sent out of that speaker back into the microphone. So it's called feedback because there's a feedback loop. And it just keeps hearing itself getting louder and louder and louder. That's why it gets louder because it's multiplying the signal that it just heard each time that it hears it. All right. So... Keep, keep in mind at that, um, so since we're on the subject of microphones and monitoring systems, um, I know that 90% of you have heard, don't cuff the mic, don't cup the mic. Basically what that means, uh, let me see if I have some, okay. What that means is you have a microphone. Hold the microphone in front of your mouth, but below your mouth, and point it towards your mouth. You want your sound going across the top of the microphone, okay? And the reason that is, if you put the mic right in front of your mouth, you're going to get what they call plosives. It's kind of like explosives without the EX. They're called plosives. Those are the P's, the B's, the anything that pushes air into the mic and causes that, that popping sound. <laughs> That's why you have pop filters in front of microphones when you're going into the studio they diffuse the air in other words they make the air separate in the smaller burst of air so they don't affect the diaphragm of the microphone the diaphragm of the microphone is what is receiving your voice every time you sing speak whatever the case may be it vibrates the diaphragm and that turns into an electrical signal that's being sent to whatever recording situation that you're in all right so when you're using the microphone don't cuff the mic like this the reason is your microphone is made the way it is for a reason either it's a dynamic microphone or it's a condenser microphone you know the difference because with condenser microphones you have to have what they call phantom power that is an external power source coming from the mixing station going to the microphone because it needs that power in order to be used and they're highly sensitive they have a much broader frequency range. Um, that's what you use like on microphone overheads or um, the two microphones that are sitting way up over the drums. That's what those are used for. Um, on preacher's podiums, the real small microphones, those are condenser mics. Dynamic microphones, they can take a whole lot more abuse. They're not powered by an external power source. They don't need it. And you can abuse them a little bit more. You can get on them or whatever the case may be. But when you start to cover up the, the microphone, what you're doing is cutting off the frequency response. 
frequency response is what you're able to hear. That's the um, that's the fidelity of the microphone. Fidelity means the ability to reproduce sound accurately, and the, the higher the accuracy of reproducing that sound, the higher the fidelity. So that's what hi-fi is. You know what I'm saying. So if you get a system and it says hi-fi then you know you're getting a little better fidelity than something that's not high fi all right cutting off the frequency response makes it work on the engineer the engineer the person that's mixed in the show making where you can hear making sure everything can be heard in the audience that individual has to work much harder to make you sound good because you're limiting him to a much more narrow frequency range your frequency range if it was like this Covering up the microphone reduces it down to this. I know I'm ashy, so excuse the ashy hands, but I'm not ashamed. Everybody gets ashy from time to time. I'm not doing anything. I'm chilling, so I can do that. I can do that. So don't make your engineer work harder than he has to because then they get frustrated and he won't want to work with you. And the last thing you want to do is piss off your audio engineer that's running your sound. Um, you run across some good people. You know what I mean? That, you know, work with you, do the best they can. But the better the sound engineer, the better you'll be able to work with them. And the better professional artist that you are, the easier it will be for you to get what you're looking for because you'll be able to speak more along his level. If you can't hear yourself, can I get a little more monitor? Can I get a little more me in the monitor? Can I get a little more keys in the monitor? So, yeah, just a few things for you to kind of absorb and um, put into practice. This is um, artist, engineers, mixing, novice, whatever, sound reinforcement 101. So hopefully y'all got something out of this because some of y'all need to know this. All right. So we'll holla till next time. Peace.